So today I'll talk about carbohydrate classification. Let's get started. We said earlier that saccharides are divided into four chemical groups. Monosaccharides or single sugars. Disaccharides, di meaning two or double, so two sugars connected to each other. Oligosaccharides, oligo meaning a few, so a few sugars connected to each other. And finally polysaccharides, poly meaning many, so many sugars connected to each other. Monosaccharides and disaccharides, the smallest lower molecular weight carbohydrates, are commonly referred to as sugars. Now, think of a sugar as a block or a brick. One brick is a monomer, in our case it's a monosaccharide. So disaccharides are made of two bricks or blocks and oligosaccharides are made with a few blocks. And finally we have polysaccharides, which are made with many blocks or monomers. So they are polymers of sugar. They can be homomers, the same monomers, or heteromers, different monomers. Monosaccharides are classified according to the number of carbons. I will discuss them one by one, but some are not very important right now. So I will just show them to you without any comment. So if you are ready, let's get started. Now let's talk about the three carbon sugars or triosis. An important member in this category is glyceraldehyde. Glyceraldehyde is just like a glycerol with an aldehyde moiety. But what is a glycerol? It is an alcohol with a sweet taste and with three carbons and three hydroxyl groups attached at each carbon. A good way to visualize it is imagine three glasses each filled with ice. Glass with ice means glycerol and with alcohol. Let's imagine that the glass is a carbon atom. Since each has alcohol, it means that each has an hydroxyl group or OH group and that's why glycerol ends with the suffix O. And finally, the three glasses are inside the ring, which represents glycerin, not to be confused with glycine, which is an amino acid. Secondly, we have dihydroxyacetone, which is an acetone with two hydroxyl groups. But what is an acetone? Before I discover it, I would like to imprint something very important in your mind, something you're going to see too often in biochemistry. What is an acetyl group? Just remember something. From this day on, every time you see this three letter combination A's, like in acetyl, acetone, acetyl coenzyme A, acetyl choline, acetyl acetate, etc., think of the two aces with hard suit, the ace of hearts and the ace of spades. The two aces represent two carbon atoms. Now think you are putting these two aces in a card box. Card box represents the carbonyl group which is a carbon double bonded to an oxygen atom. So, in organic chemistry, acetyl is a moiety that contains a methyl group single bonded to a carbonyl. Acetone is the simplest ketone, so it contains a carbon double bonded to oxygen group, which comes from the acetyl moiety. Now we have two carbons, but since it is a ketone, it needs to be sandwiched, that's why we add the simplest group, a methyl group, CH3 group, which results in a three carbon atom compound in total. And finally, we add two hydroxyl groups and we are done. This is dihydroxyacetone. Tetroses are not very important, so I'm going to skip them for now. As about pentosis, an important member is ribose. The 5 carbon ring shaped form of ribose, which looks like a house, is part of the nucleic acid, which is the house of our genetic information, forming the ribonucleic acid or RNA. If the hydroxyl group in carbon number 2 loses an oxygen, so it is deoxygenated or deprived of oxygen, now our 5 carbon sugar is called deoxyribose, which is part of our deoxyribonucleic acid or shortly called DNA. Here I would like to mention something really important. I said earlier that carbohydrates have the empirical formula CMH2OM. Ribose of course follows this rule, but this is not true for deoxyribose. Deo Deoxyribose is an exception from this rule, since it is a ribose deoxygenated or that has lost an oxygen. It has the same formula as ribose minus one oxygen. Now let's jump to our favorite and sexy sugars, the hexoses. These are the most common saccharides. A great mnemonic to remember them is by imagining a galactic man eating grapefruit. Galactic is for galactose, man is for mannose. Grape is for glucose, since grape is very sweet, and fruit is of course for fructose. Since these are maybe the most common sugars you'll see in biology and biochemistry, let's just explore their open and ring structure. Glucose, galactose and mannose are almost identical. 
they all have the aldehyde group as a functional group and they all have a 5 carbon ring structure. The difference is that glucose has its OH group at the 4th carbon glued to the ground. Galactose has its OH group at the 4th carbon pointing up in the sky and toward the galaxy. Mannose is the same as glucose, but it just has the OH group at the second carbon pointing up. Now let's see the difference between alpha and beta glucose. Alpha glucose has its OH group at the first carbon or the anomeric carbon pointing down and in a different side compared to the sixth carbon, the CH2OH group, while beta galactose has its OH group at the first carbon pointing up and in the same side as the sixth carbon. A great mnemonic for this is beta is for be with me, so the OH at the same side, and beta for bird, which flies up in the sky and SOH is pointing up. Fructose has some differences from these three. First of all, it has a ketone functional group at carbon number two. And secondly, it has a house ring structure, just like ribose. But there is another carbon group connected to the first carbon, making a total of six carbons. Next are the heptoses, but they are not very important, so I'm just skipping them. And finally we have the nonosis. An important member in this category is neuraminic acid. It is an acid since it has a carboxylic acid group at the first position. Secondly, the first letter N in the name suggests four things. First, N for neural tissue. It is called neuraminic acid because it was first found in the brain or neuronal tissue. Secondly, N for 9 carbon atoms because neuraminic acid is a 9 carbon atom monosaccharide. Thirdly, N for and for nitrogen atom or amine group because a nitrogen atom or an amine group is attached to it at the fifth carbon and finally N for the N or O substitute the N or O substitute derivatives or neuraminic acid are collectively known as sialic acids it is also the name for the most common member of this group and acetyl neuraminic acid or NANA so it means we add the two aces we talked about to the amine group. You see, biochemistry is so easy and a lot of fun when you learn the basics step by step. If you really like this video, you can subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media.